That was easy. Hey guys, and how's it going? I'll do a little bit of a backstory and we'll get into wrenching on this. So about four or five weeks ago, I went to an estate sale. I went around yard sale. And it was later in the afternoon, about, about three o'clock or so. Uh, I went and I hit one. It was more of an estate sale. They were getting rid of everything in the house that um, was there. The uh, woman's husband passed uh, probably about 10 years prior. And he had a bunch of power equipment. I've done, it was four pieces that I grabbed. It was a DR field and brush mower, a zero turn, a push mower, and this John Deere. John Deere is the last one to get serviced. I know nothing about it. Of course, there's nobody to ask what had happened with it. I believe it's a 2008 or 2009, and he passed away shortly after that. Battery's dead. I don't know if it was put away with fuel in it. If it was not, I, I just, I have no history on it. Uh, on the... Uh, the DR, hold on one sec, there you go. On the DR field and brush mower, it had a bad coil, but it had the same engine as this. So I went and I robbed the coil off of it. That is the missing component that is right there. And I did since then order another one, so I have that. It looks pretty decent. I do not see any real battle scars on it. It has a bunch of pieces on the side over here. There's the pieces that I took off. And then it has what's called the power bagger. Essentially, it's a fan that hangs off the side and runs off of a belt on the mower deck. And that dark hole, there was a fan down in there. And it just assists in making vacuum to suck up, uh, you know, leaves, uh, grass. But in my use, I need this more for fall cleanup for leaves. And guess what? Fall is here. So <laughs> that is what... Uh, this thing is going to be get put into service for. Let me get you go set up. We'll start getting into it and see what it does. One well, the other thing is it never had a key in it. She couldn't find a key. So I just went and picked up a key today. So we'll be able to turn it to the uh, power up side of things. Let's go see what happens. It does have an hour meter on it. And uh, I have no idea what it has. I would think it would be very low. You guys want to make a guess? I'm going to say 16.5. Take a guess. Go put power to it, see what it says. The key was like a, a whopping $2.50. Did you make your guess? I don't have any power. Nothing, nothing lights up. Let's go get a jumper pack, put a jumper pack on it. can't read it. Use some kind of code. It's flash all, but no. what's that say? You read it? 192.3? Yeah, we were close. <laughs> I think that's what it says. 152? Or is that 15? Uh, hold on. Okay, get my glasses. Yeah, it definitely says 192.3. Yeah, when you turn it off. He ran a lot for uh, a period of one one year or so that it was being used. Again, who knows what story, the story you're told and the story you get. Sometimes it's different things. But that's still low for a tractor that is, what is it, 11 years old? 11 to 12 years old? I have 100 and uh, 192 on it isn't bad. Uh, I'm going to go, that battery's dead. I'm going to actually pop that out of there. We'll go. Put that somewhere else to go charge so the battery charger doesn't annoy us where we're getting into other stuff. Let me get that out of the way and uh, we'll get into checking some fluids and putting the coil on and possibly firing her up. So the tractor has a date of 4 8 of 09. And then the battery has a date of 14, April 14th. So it must have got served because one of the other pieces of equipment too had everything with 14 on it also. So maybe she had some stuff. You know, the local dealer kind of come in and service a couple of pieces. And then just, they got put away again. Or maybe some kid was coming over cutting the grass. I just don't know. But someone's been in here before us. And Johnny 5 is on the job. I just put it on there. Put a test light across it just so I can see what's going on. And, yeah, it's going to go dead right away. We'll let that sit for about a half hour. We'll come back. We'll see what the light does. If it has any kind of glow to it, then we know it's starting to take a charge. If not, then we know it's just crapped out. See what she's got for Earl. 
a little dirty. It's full. I actually wouldn't call that dirty. Find out after it spins for a little bit, sometimes it'll kick up all the crap, you know, the dirt kind of settles out. I do see on the oil filter too, it's got a date of 624.14 service on it too. Probably gonna do the most damage is fuel. Yeah, it's one of those tanks that drop down we're not gonna be able to see. Nah, I can smell it. Smell it? Yeah. I have a feeling we are gonna go into a Kerber eater. Yeah. There's your line. Right at the plastic. So it's got half a tank of gas in it. Of, no, hopefully it's gas. <laughs> I don't know if I said yet, I have heat 754. I think it's a, a fair deal. Judging that to, it's an unknown. If it was all up and running, I'm guessing probably about two grand maybe. But without verifying that everything is good, sometimes that can get very expensive. I don't think it's going to crank. I think we might have to be on the seat or push a pedal down or both. Let's go. I got the other coil wire disconnected. Let's see if it's going to crank for us. Yeah, let's, let's listen to it. Starter sounds horrible. Uh, let's go get our, another, our other new coil. We'll pop that on there. See if we got spark and see if she'll uh, fire up with a little dribble down a fuel down inside it. Plus she just fire right up and run perfect. You guys kind of look around the corner a little bit. I think it's tab up. Usually it says one side will say cylinder head. I do not see that anywhere on it. We're going to go for that direction. And I think for a shim, I have the, the magnet over to us. We'll get it off the magnet. And I think the the key package is gonna double as our shim. <laughs> I'm gonna rotate that to where the magnet is and just let it get drawn into it. All that real quick see how it looks it looks I'd call that 20 thou it's a kill wire all that does is ground out the coil to make the spark without that connected it'll just run forever let's go put actually I'm gonna go pull a plug out we'll spin it over see if we got spark yeah, the uh, the DR fuel and brush mower didn't have it ran on one cylinder, and when I pulled the plugs, you can kind of tell it ran that way for a long time, so it was running poorly. And again, that's why you got to be kind of iffy with stuff that doesn't run. I want you to offer those plugs look brand new. And again, this is an aftermarket coil too, so nothing says that that's gonna play well for us. Get on there, get. You see. We'll give her a spin. Yeah, it's got spark. A little on the weak side. Now it's got nothing. Hmm. It's kind of, kind of crappy actually. Uh, I'm gonna go check the other side with the same plug. See how it looks. Yeah, the air gap looks about the same too on the coils. It's an aftermarket coil. Let's see what we get on this one. Uh, definitely more consistent. I say you just run it. But if we have a cylinder that's dropping out, I know where to blame it already. So this is premix, meaning what you would use in a two-stroke. I kind of like to use that better than starting fluids. She's stuff that's been sitting around for a while. A little bit of oil on the top end kind of helps stuff. I don't think this one's going to be much of an issue, but you know, stuff that's been sitting outside for 
a long period of time. Let's give that a little bit of that. Give her a crank and see what we get. I want to make sure that the throttle's down all the way too. She gets you to look up just a hair in case something flies off. I don't want to catch it. Choke is off. The throttle does not move. Is that a bad sign? <laughs> The throttle cable is stuck. We're gonna go give her anyway. If I over res, I'll just kill it. Let me get the wire off the flywheel. Yeah, she'll run. But I think we definitely have carburetor issues. Choke moves. Throttle, we gotta go look into that throttle. Hopefully it's just the, cause it, it has to go through a, a linkage there's a, a governor linkage. The carburetor itself moves. It's just that you can't move the, the throttle itself. Yeah. Here, a little help in hand. Where it mounts. There it goes. Yeah, that's definitely gummy. That's full throttle now. Now it's going. They shoot some lube down those cables. It's mostly in the cable. Let's go, um, Prime it again, we'll fire it up. See if it sucks in a gas through and fires off on its own before we start getting into carbs. some choke. I definitely think the carb is going to need some love. Even the, even the choke is kind of fighting. I'm going to hold it in the choke position. not seen any fuel. I don't think there is a fuel shut off. We're going to go look real quick on this. We're also going to look for a fuel pump. Let's see what we got. All right, our fuel pump's right here. And that gets a pulse from the, the crankcase and it pulses the fuel. Let's go pull a fuel line off of there. We'll give her a crank, see if anything is coming out through it. Because that carb's a little bit of a pain in the ass to do. It's not terrible, but Go we'll just uh, pop that off and we'll see if we get anything coming out of the fuel pump. Well, that's something. Go up. Take a urine sample. old age. You gotta wait a second before you pull away. Not terrible. It's yellow, but it's not like it's... I don't see water puddling in the bottom of it. Yeah, actually I do a little bit. It's starting. Sometimes you let it sit too. Five or ten minutes, you come back, there'll be a little bubble of uh, water on the bottom. Alright, we gotta get to that float bowl. First, let's take a peek on our battery. And that ain't looking good. <laughs> Yeah, we might be buying one of those.
I don't know if you got to pull these studs out or did that hold everything in place? Let's go get that. Yeah, eyeball the linkage. Linkage on the bottom and around the side here that's holding us. They have little quick clips on them. I'm going to reposition you. Yes, this one's the choke. I'll flip that over to the side. Drop down. Make it so that they don't fall off. Same with the other one. Sometimes on the other end, there'll be multiple holes that they can drop into. And then you're like, which one was it? <laughs> it's both of them. It's got a little, little spring on there. There we go. Yeah, let's go take our little two barrel over to the bench and pop the bowl off of it. I think there's a drain on here. Let's go crack that open. Let's see what we get for fuel. I emptied the cup before we started. I'll just take it right out. Sometimes what happens while well, I'm looking for water because water will go all the way to the very bottom point and that's where the carburetor sucks fuel up from so if there's water there the water is actually kind of thicker than the gas and a lot of times you can't get it to draw it up it really doesn't look bad though other than the color that screwdriver is not going to do it I need the shake and break. The other thing too is this. This is a fuel shut off. There'll be a jet inside here. Let's go get a little wrench, pop this off of here. So what this does, as soon as you turn power off, it's got a plunger that, pl that plugs the uh, tube that sucks the fuel up into the carburetor. It blocks that off immediately so no fuel can get drawn up. Let's go pop that off real quick. And it's got crap on it. When you put power to it, it draws it in and allows fuel to go. But you can always see it's already got some varnish on it. I think we're going to go need to try it one more time. Let's screw it over. Yep. Bigger tool. First time I had to use this on a carburetor. The shake and break. An air chisel and it hammers down. You get a little handle on the side you could turn while you're while you're wrapping on it. Ready? Let's go see what we got. Don't lose any screws. It's a funky setup, huh? It's got one for each side, so it's got two ports. Let's see if we can get this whole assembly out of here. There you go. There's a bunch of crap in the bottom. So that solenoid, like I said, it has to draw. Put it back together. So that screws on like that. You can see where it's blocking off the port. And it has to draw fuel up through that center. And 
I'm not sure if it's showing on. Let me see if get behind the camera and eyeball it. Get something to point. Right down in here. Just a bunch of crap. And I think it was was and or is blocking the port between there and there. We're gonna go throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner for a while. We'll let that get cleaned up. And I'm gonna eyeball some of this stuff too. So basically it's the same as any other car, but it's got two of everything. Never had one of these apart before. It's pretty cool. Look, it's got another set of jets down inside there. Bunch of metering ports. Well, that one the, looks like that one's kind of clogged too. Surprised because it, it's really not terribly dirty. I guess it was terribly dirty enough where it won't run. Right, let's go uh, get that cleaned up. And another battery check. Probably about 15 minutes later. Yeah, we're getting nothing. All right, I am going to take the battery charger and crank her up to 11 for about 10 minutes. mark and it's not really drawing much yeah well both of those are doing their thing let's go take a peek at the track the rest of the tractor I took the hood off give us a little bit more working room so it has this thing it looks like a recirculation not quite sure wow, I think it was even far too look how far that thing goes well, the bagger has to go there so that's got to come out. It's got a little deflector door or something. I've never seen one of those before. Hopefully that comes off fairly easy. <laughs> that's for uh, mulching. You can grind this stuff back on itself. Let's see what things do we take that right out of there? No? What do you think? Maybe a wing nut? Looks like a wing nut there. Those two wing nuts, maybe? Oh, I think something in the back would hold it too, huh? You see anything? No. It's got power steering. A little hydraulic cylinder right there. I have a John Deere 318 upstairs too with a, uh, a plow on it. It has the same setup. So this is more of a a lawn tractor, garden tractor is heavier, but uh, for a lawn tractor, it is quite beefy. Must have something. What was here? The hood rattling on it? It's got a, almost a timing belt. And it's got teeth on both sides. That's the one running back to the transmission. Nope, that's the mower deck. Some mower decks are keyed. They'll run the like a timing belt, and the blades have to. One has to clear the other. You have to clear each one, and they're timed together. I don't think John Deere does that, but uh, I think with simplicity, kind of suck it. You bump something, it jumps a tooth, and the two blades crashing and everything, and everything just, just absolutely destroys itself. One of my neighbors has one of those. He comes over crying about once every two years. Comes with a pen. <laughs> it's got a tow ball on it too. Maybe we'll pop that bagger off of there too, just to give us a little bit of room to get around it. Think that's factory? Not sure on that one. Looks like I took a hit, backed into a tree or something, a bunch of cracks. And the bagger. <laughs> Raccoon attacks us, <laughs> jumps out at us. And on that note, yeah, it's not even getting hot. Probably got a, it, it took a. It took a second for the glow to go away. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna put her back on low. We'll let her do its thing. But uh, we're not giving them much hope for that. You have to rip it off the floor. Wrong one. Yeah, we'll 
just let it trickle charge probably overnight. Yeah, see how this comes off. It's like a giant mouse trap, and I feel it's going to get me as soon as I go to take it apart. Uh, I'll stay low in case it slams. <laughs> bolts up there to take the top section of the bag off. Ah, you know what? The, the tow ball is holding it. How would you use the tow ball? It's kind of a pain. You think it would have a break? Well, it is what it is. Get the tow ball off. Yeah, look at it. Trying to understand what, what the thought process is. All right, so this is all part of the bagger and it's got like an upper and lower it bolted section. You can take two bolts out of the top Get the upper half of the bagger off but if you wanted to tow something you really don't have enough room to get a, a hitch up and over that that's really tight i don't see that happening and i you know it's definitely holding this down but you would never be able to kind of pull anything around easily you think it would be a, a better system than that why do you have a quick release pin here but you have it bolted together here perplexing. You would think that this would not be part of that. It would be separate. It's got a quick release pins up here that'll take this bracket off, but that's still not going to help us. A little bit of lube will help. It's about principle now. I just let well enough be alone. I was just hoping to get in there easier with the camera without the bag or assembly on it, but sometimes you gotta know when to say when. When. There's the one on the other side. I just wanna cooperate. One of our culprits right there. So it's dropped down, you can see inside there, where those three bolts are that I, I undid. All right there. It just seems like it's... All right. At least it slides back and forth now. We're getting somewhere. <laughs> now I know why I was left on and why the bagger was left on. I think it'd be an easier system to get on and off than that. Problem is too, it's it's um, an electric deck. It's not like I, I could lift it up. If I have to, I'll back the tractor off halfway and lift the lift up so we can kind of see underneath. I don't know if it's like keyed into a slot and he has to go back and drop down. Just don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna keep wiggling around on that. Hopefully that thing falls out of there because again, I want this thing for the bagger. That's the, uh, the only need I have for it. Try to 
take the blades. Maybe stuck under the blades. There it goes. <laughs> no! No, I don't want to leave! You can't make me! <laughs> Right, I'm gonna get a jack under the front of the tractor, jack the tractor up, get that thing out from underneath there. Yeah, it's just uh, she's tight. It's been fun putting that thing on there. Probably gotta take the blades off and, and install it. It's crashing down. Taste my fingers out. Conglomeration out. Well, that wasn't going to come out of there easy when I was it. Big kidney bean. That's who we got. Well, all three are on the right way. I think one of the blades on the, I think it was the zero turn, it was upside down. I knew the sharp looking. I would not exactly call those high lift blades, they might be mulching blades. There were some other blades that came with it. I don't know if they are for this or not, because one there was two blades, a pair of two blades. And actually I think they're right behind us. Could take a peek at one of those. They look like almost the same thing, right? I left the light behind by accident. Let's go see if they are the same. Yeah, no, it's dark, but it's like they're pretty much lining the hole up in the center. They're about, about the same thing. Well, we'll see how it performs with that. I would think that would have more of a more of a cup for the high lift ones. I think our carburetor. Ultrasonic cleaner is done doing its thing. Let's go get that, see if we can put that back together. Yes, that was 30 minutes. I just did the pole. That looks a little better, huh? Clean that out, put that back together. I'm gonna make sure I can blow air through there and out the side. That's where it, I believe it was clogged. It's clear now. I don't want those chemicals on everything, so that's why I didn't put everything in. This one has a lot of plastic to it. Kind of weighing out each one you know what kind of damage you'll do with the cleaner compared to how much damage it has we could probably test that bench test that too let's go do the car this float setup has 
couple of jets in it too. Those two right there. That one looks, they yeah, actually they both look a little cruddy. I'm just gonna give them a blast of air. They look pretty clear though, I can see right through them. And it's got a needle and seat built into it. So I believe the gas is gonna come in here to the float chamber. I'm just gonna blow in. Make sure that valve works though. Which it does. Good. I see we put it back together. Let's make more. That choke does not seem to close all the way. I would think it would close more than that. It might be just the way it is, but I would think it'd be more. I don't think throttle position matters. We're going to leave it. Yeah, it usually closes right up as I, as I physically force it further. <laughs> I don't see it hitting anything. I want to shoot some air through those passages too. Gasket got beat up. And that's the throttle side. We're going to leave all those pieces right where they are. Hopefully when I bolt it back together, all the pieces line right up and doesn't get a big intake leak. Because I do not have a gasket at the moment. But if we have a problem, that will be what our issue is. We knew it was getting gas anyway. The, the, the carb had fuel in it. We forgetting anything? Actually, I could take it apart right there too. Pull the pin. Let's go pull the pin. Quick peek. Needle and seat. Yeah, it looks fine. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Kind of non-adjustable anyway. The old brass ones, you bend the tab up and down to change the float level. I've done it with heat on the plastic ones, but I'm going to leave well enough alone. Now the question is, did it go like that? Or did it go like that? Do you remember? <laughs> uh, we are going to go peek on the machine. So that is the carb side. And I believe it was facing the shutoff. That has to, you think it'd be better to put that on that side? Let's see if we go to better, go together any better. Maybe I like that better. We'll throw our two bolts in it, our drain back in it, and our fuel shut off. Put it back on the carb, back on the carb, back on the tractor. And give her another go. Got to lube those cables up too. You want to test that let's go get ourselves a little bit of 12 volt we'll fire that make sure that pin goes up and down i don't think polarity matters <laughs> we're gonna find out it is not firing that's supposed to pull in there it goes but that did not do what it was supposed to that is real that didn't work at first that might have been our problem all along too 
Yeah, it's not pulling with much authority. I'm gonna take some carb cleaner, kind of spray it inside here. Maybe it's all like waxed over with uh, just old fuel. See if we can get that to perform a little bit better. Yeah, that is definitely not snapping to attention. Looks like we're gonna go a brake clean because I do not have carb clean. Try that again. And this is running off the jumper pack. This isn't like a, a little nine volt battery, or nothing. This is this is that jumper pack that cranked the tractor over. That's better. Yeah, I bet you that's where our problem was right there. It wasn't pulling back, allowing any fuel to get through. Either way, these are carbs clean. You know it's. <laughs> All right, now let's go put it back together and uh, see what we get. Let's see what we get. It's probably gonna take a second for the float bow to fill up. Plus the choke is real, like it really, it just springs back. Whether it's supposed to be like that, you hold it for a second like let go, it's just odd. So I'm gonna hold it up in the air for a tad. Let's see what we get. I let go of it now. Yes. We forgot to do some. I didn't put. I know what I didn't do. <laughs> Oops. I put the little stop screw on it. The bleeder screw. I just see if you guys are paying attention. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Wanted to uh, make sure we flush the fuel system thoroughly. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take an air gun, blow some of that away. We're not going to let all that stuff sit there when I go and fire it up. When you're watching it pouring out, you ain't even say anything. Right, let's try it again. When you turn the key, you can hear the solenoid firing. I don't think we could hear that the first time around. shut her down all right i'm gonna go pop the covers on it's a little breaky yuppie breaky yuppie is that a word but again that fuel is on a little on the yellow side i should take it out of there and probably run that in my truck and put some fresh stuff in it but i don't know if i'm that motivated 
I'm gonna go put the covers back on it. Maybe we'll run it for a little bit, see if it clears up. If not, we'll maybe purge that fuel out of there and try to get something that's a, above 70 octane. All back together. I didn't put the cover over the air filter. Filter's new. Again, they serviced it. It looks like they serviced it, probably brought it back to her and just never did anything with it again. I'm gonna let her run. Now that it's got the cooling fan on it, she didn't want to let it run too long without the fan. That cover is not sitting right where it took a dent. I'm gonna pop that back off again. That doesn't doesn't look right. Didn't that spin funny? Yeah, that's not sitting right. things are wrong it is running on it, it's breaking up it is running on both sides to pull plug off each side it does cut out see it is firing on both sides but it's breaking up I'm gonna you know possibly the gas but also when I turn the key off it doesn't turn off right away it's kind of weird like it's using just the fuel solenoid shut off to shut off it's not shutting off electrically with a spark I do believe I did not screw anything up as far as the kill wires that were on there. Not saying that they work. But we definitely have an, an issue with that. So I'm just kind of quickly checking over. This is where it gets the signal. This is the wire coming from the ignition switch telling it to shut off. Possibility could be even the key switch or something too. You hear the solenoid firing. Well, what's happening is I'm turning the key off and then it's 
the solenoid is, is blocking and it's, it's running out of fuel and shutting off. It's not shutting off the power to the coil, which is definitely not supposed to do that. Hmm. So grab the ohmmeter while the gas is draining out of it and essentially if I just touch these together I'm on ohms and I'm just looking for a path to ground and this wire comes from the key I'm just gonna go check see if I can get a bite on that I'm just gonna turn the key on and off open Closed. It is working. And what that does is it grounds the coil out. I'm going to go double check on the other side. Actually, it's all one. I believe it's all one wire. Yeah, just for shits and giggles. Let's go make sure. It's always better to confirm. It's like measure twice, cut once. Grounded, key in the off position. Open it up, it opens up. It seems like I had a delay though, hold on. Okay. Let's run. That's got a delay to it. It must have a relay. Alright, so that's in run position. And it takes a couple of seconds for that to shut off. I don't know if that's just the way it is on this tractor. Maybe that's just the way it's set up. Maybe they want to run the fuel out by letting the solenoid shut off first. It's weird. Weird, I tell you. But that's what it was doing. I noticed it wants to turn the key off. It would run for a second when the key was off and then finally shut off. And a little fresh stuff. Definitely fresher than what was in it, let's say. You can count this gas by months instead of years. Yeah, we'll call that good. I have the fuel filter off and I'm on the front of the track. I'm going to just go draw some whatever's in that line. We'll just let that go do the same thing. Let that run for a second. We'll just let it purge. Whatever is in the line. We'll call that good. Now we know we got freshed up. Besides what's in the carburetor, we'll have fresh stuff going up. I did end up opening the drain on the carb. So it is empty. It's probably going to take a little bit to, to crank and fill up. Plus the fuel line's all empty too. And the fuel filter. About to say, that sounds better than it died.
I still have a carb issue. It is hunting. Possibly maybe that gasket that I took off the back is causing an intake leak. I don't think so, but I do have some kind of issue going on inside there. So I'm going back in. It sounds like it doesn't have an idle circuit. I should be able to hold that right against the idle. See if it stays running. Yeah, so it's got no idle circuit. And what's happening is in, on the higher revs, it's fine. And then it goes the back, the governor off, it goes back to where idle is, but there's nothing there in idle and it drops right off and it gives it full throttle again. Definitely a carburetor problem. I might have sucked up some crap too from you doing what I did. We're gonna find out. And back in we go again. Pretty clean to me. And all the pieces of the gasket, I took a quick look. It's all there. I, I highly doubt that's our issue. See, so we just have no no idle circuit. Let's pop the top. And yes, I should have all done this the first time. But you know, you take it apart, it looks good, and you're like, eh, it doesn't need that much. <laughs> Murphy's Law. Hiding under here, just a couple of passages. That wasn't going to do anything for us anyway. Can we get that out of there? And probably going to soak like I should have <laughs> the whole body of it. The problem is when you do that. These gaskets have a tendency to go to shit. I just don't want that to happen. I'm looking at these right now. I can see through all of them. They're all clear. But I got to soak it. Something is wrong in there. It has no idle. What was happening, what, what she, you should be able to do is when it's running, you should be able to go right against that stop essentially or, or, or close to it, right at idle. And it should just hold that in idle. And what was happening was it's running fine actually. Is that the, uh, yeah. So full throttle, idle. And when it it's revving up, it's on, on full throttle, and then you kind of go back to the idle, idle position. It should kind of maintain there. What it was was it was just falling off. It was getting no fuel at all would die the governor would want to go full throttle it would recover again and rev up and say okay you're revving too high and then go to back go to back down towards idle and then there was just nothing there it would, it would die and then give it full throttle again that's that hunting that you hear going up and down i'm definitely not familiar with this carb also that choke Generally, they drill holes in the center so you can't over choke it. That's what those holes are there. So it has some air passage going through it. But usually it, it closes right off. And 
it does not do that. I'm going to get a little forceful. <laughs> so can she shall go. And another thing that's weird, that it only opens the throttle that much. I don't get that either. That thing should be going wide open. Yet they have a stop at, I don't know, 30% throttle? 35% throttle? It should be go, going straight up and down. That is just odd. Odd, I tell you. What there is is little passages. And if you can see the ports right here, that's where it draws it in. These little, these little holes. It looks like there's three on each side of them. They can have a possibility of being clawed. Actually, four is another one there. Man, that's weird. You might let it soak overnight, do a little bit of homework. You know what? Why? That would turn like a horse motor into a like a 10 it just doesn't doesn't get full throttle nice. that one's got me let's take a quick look at valve clearance That one feels okay. in about five seconds uh, that might be promising I'm not gonna let it run overnight I'm just gonna leave a charge while I'm here I'm gonna call it for tonight and uh, we'll pick this back up in the morning we'll throw this back on the charger well I may have overcooked it just a tad as it's been a good two days <laughs> it's been soaking I just haven't been able to get back to it so hopefully whatever was ailing it is no longer ailing it. Get that cleaned up, put it back together and try it again. All right, let's see what we get. I think we should put it back down on the ground and we'll just run the transmission through its paces first let's do the tire pressures I'm guessing 3 psi what's yours I would call that four <laughs> I'm gonna bump them all up and then uh, we'll try its its road test I gotta probably put all these up, maybe 15. 
That's 15 right there. Even got to use a factory battery hold down. That's yeah, not safe. Before we go anywhere though, I think we have to push that back in. That's the roll part of the hydrostatic transmission. Now it should be in gear. You two hands, you gotta be able to hit the. All right, hold on. We're getting, we're getting acquainted here. You gotta be able to spring load a choke, which is funny. I've never seen that before. And then when you shut it off, it literally stays running for a couple of seconds. I never had seen that on any piece of equipment before, neither. First time for everything. I think next part we should go for is this bagger setup, the power bagger. This bracket was in there. Don't know if that is for the bagger. Could be for anything that was in the garage. I guess we're gonna figure that out though, huh? That would seem like, well then again, taking, taking that thing off was a pain in the ass too. I could see them having to have to bolt and unbolt something. It's got a big, big fan. And it runs off a belt off the mower deck. And that has the chute that goes up to the bagger and throws it all up there. See how much it fights us trying to get it on. Let's drop that deck down. I need to be able to flip this one up to get that belt on there. I really should have pressure washed it. But I'm not gonna. He's got a like a mounting bracket here and here. Guess you gotta go look at that linkage and see what it does. I wonder if we're missing something. Let's drop it on the floor. Yeah, we are definitely missing something that goes from there to there. And usually it kind of swings. 
the one, other one I have anyway, in case it jams up or gets needs to get cleared out. It swings out and then you lift off on it, but that's not a John Deere product. So I don't, I could possibly stop by. I, I checked that house pretty good. And again, they were cleaning it out. So there's a possibility it left with something else or got thrown out or trashed. And uh, we may have to go make our own. I'll be able to buy it too, but uh, maybe we try bringing a picture of what this thing looks like up and uh, we can create something that it, although it might go to it it's definitely something else that's missing because you need to be able to drop in like I said to that and that for the locating parts of it looking at that too I don't see I can see maybe this attaching isn't that where that one bolt was for that funky cover that was underneath Do you see any kind of, I don't see even anything where that would square down on. Maybe up there. That's probably a hold down for the chute maybe. I would think maybe a bungee cord attaches to that. Where's the chute? Yeah, that's gonna be the hold down for that. Well, I like to try to figure this stuff out on my own, but sometimes you just gotta go to the internet. So we're missing a bracket that looks kind of like the letter Z that supported that. It's got a part number there, I think, too. I think that's the part number. Possibly. But I'm gonna go look and see if we have anything in our stash that is the right diameter. Maybe we could bend something up and just make it so that we have it to move forward with right now instead of having to try to go order something or go search one out. In my roundy bits scrap section, not solid. That might be it. What's the? We need about two feet. That might. That might be what we're looking for. I don't think. How easy you think that's going to be to bend? How sweet it is. <laughs> Hopefully it's, it's fairly hard and it's the only other thing I'm worried about is it me bend too easy. And then again, it is solid, so. That looks about the right angle. Got a prop that probably should maybe go a little bit more because once you put the weight on it, it's probably gonna sag. Uh, maybe we'll take a piece of wire and we'll just bend a piece of wire up to give ourselves a general idea. The first bend is no problem. That one we don't have to really worry about. It's just where you make the second one where it's going to have a finished line that comes straight up from here is gonna be the, the distance that it swings out. I think we could probably do like a, a washer. We'll weld a washer when we get the right height, put a washer over it, we'll tack that and it'll maintain that one. We'll probably do the same on this one. We'll weld the washer on the top side and uh, we can kind of fudge, you know, if, if we leave them alone on the long side, give us a little bit of working room. Right, let's go get a piece of wire. A little on the long side. I see we go tweak, tweak this one a little bit. I'm gonna do it in a vise. I'm gonna knock off about a half inch of that, make that a little closer, come back and fit it. Well, I think it's pretty close enough for us to work with. Kind of when you go from center to center, you don't have to put the wire in the center. If you go edge to edge, it's really the same thing. Along to the same diameter hole in the center. So I'm going to go take that out of there and we need to just go make them one out of something a tad bit thicker. <laughs> See how this goes. 
I cleaned that piece up on a wire wheel. It's even got a musty one part number. I already put on it. Yeah, just kidding. Yeah, this one's the one that's more important. Let's go put ourselves a a chalk line on it. We'll go right for the center. And you're gonna want the center of it right there. I'm gonna try bending it actually right on that. We'll see what happens. It has a tendency to, I think, grow. I think it wants to, it's gonna stretch out, but I think it wants to stretch out because I'm going past 90 rather be a little too long than a little too short <laughs> and if we have to if i if my dimensions off a little we could also put a little bit of an s in the middle to maybe take up some material but it's kind of hard to go the other way let's try it on that see how we make out Yeah, we're still off. We still have more to go. That can lift up on the other end. I would say we need to add more bend. But we're going to do it right there. Also, we're going to be a little on the shy side. Even with that, doesn't that look like it's going to be... Let's give it a shot, see what happens. I was afraid of it being too. I wonder if we can get a little bit of. Is there any fudge room left in it? <laughs> we can shim out that one if we have to. Good. Let's see. I think that's close enough. Until so we chop it off right about. Right there. Let's lift it up so the board falls out and see how she sags. What is that? It's too bad, huh? Would it drop about an inch on the top, maybe? It's looking pretty level. That looks pretty low. Plenty of clearance underneath it. I'm going to go pop that out of there and beef it up. I'm going to put some gussets. I lost it right here. So I'm going to put some gussets, build that up, and maybe a little bit the same right there and kind of run some welds on it. I uh, They did some cracking, especially because I this one I heated and unheated twice and bent it. It really did not like that. Oh well. That works.
Hey, you can't see it, but there's just an extra pulley on top of that last spindle that the belt goes around and put some tension on it. That's it. That's it. Let's uh, drop it back down to ground. We'll fire it up and let that thing spin and see what happens. You know, somewhere there's a guy that bought another machine that that bracket goes to, and he has my Z bracket for my <laughs> blower housing. So if you're out there and you see it and you want to trade, let me know. Bet you that might blow out a puff of dust when we fire it up. No choke. I think we're pretty close to the last thing on the agenda is the battery. Eh, maybe. Go pop it in and see what it does. Think she's got enough cold cranking amps still in her? <laughs> Sounds pretty good. I think that might be fine. Let's see what it does after it sits for a week though, right? I think this puppy can go home and uh, play in the grass. Dead leaves, dead grass weeds.
I'd say it's pretty full. <laughs> pretty densely packed too. Look guys, we're back at base camp. Haven't been filming in here in a little while, huh? Looks like it does quite well. No issues, it's very quiet. It's probably the quietest tractor I've run. The Honda is pretty decent too, but this one uh, I think beats it a little bit. Baggers are a little on the small side for capacity. It seems like they are probably about two thirds of the other setup that I was running, but again, uh, it does quite well for what it is. I'm sure beats raking. And this tractor will probably be here for about eh, the next month. The leaves are just starting to fall now. So I'm just, that's why I was uh, looking to get this one taken care of and uh, up to speed. Worked out pretty good. Uh, you had to make the linkage for the bagger assembly, the blower, and uh, fuel filter go through the carb. Fought us a little bit, but not too bad. Nice little machine. 192 hours on it, 193 now. <laughs> not gonna bother cleaning it. Again, it's gonna go back to the shop when uh, I'm done with the leaves. I'll run the fuel out of it, probably disconnect the battery, give it a washing, put it away, and then next spring, if the battery's no good, I'll put a new battery in it and that kind of thing. Change the fluids, do the, uh, the oil and the filter. And it's, it looks pretty clean right now. I'm just gonna run it for the, you know, the last couple hours that it's gonna get this season. And then we'll come back, yeah. Probably put it away till, actually I'll use it for cutting grass uh, all next year. I won't need the other one either. So this will be the, the new one and I can uh, get rid of the other machine that has a power bagger on it, but it's all busted up. The whole housing's all blown out. It's, it's had many years of rocks and stuff going around it and I've made metal patches and everything, but it's, it's, it's done. <laughs> so for the price of replacing that piece is what I probably paid for this whole tractor. Uh, again, it was 750 and, um, as is and uh, worked out pretty good so i'm happy with it i hope you guys are uh, enjoyed the video and uh, i'll see you soon till then later